Our next winner is a woman from South Africa with a passion for cranes. She is striving to protect the birds and their wetland habitats. The vast continent of Southern Africa. The region's delicate ecosystems depend on the rich variety of plants and wildlife living in harmony together. For hundreds of thousands of years, this bird, the wattled crane, has lived and thrived here. The fact that it still lives here means that for the time being, the wetlands are healthy. But every year, people are encroaching more and more on this landscape. The future of the cranes and this unique environment lies in the hands of man. Politics, poverty and borders are just a few hurdles that zoologist Lindy Rodwell is striving to overcome in her quest to save this extraordinary bird. In 1995, she set up the South African Crane Working Group. We feel we can really make people understand that if those birds are there and that they are seen and that they're visible and that they're breeding and that they can produce chicks and their chicks can fledge, then that wetland is healthy and that wetland is what supplies their water. Cranes are one of the oldest species of bird. Their ancestors have lived on Earth for 50 million years, far longer than the human race. Cranes are symbols of longevity, fidelity and royalty. One of their most endearing features is that they mate for life. They share the raising of their young and have elaborate courtship dances. The magic and myth of cranes are embedded in human culture. For these reasons, Lindy chose the wattled crane as a flagship species for her project. Because although the crane is so loved by man, ironically it is man who poses the greatest threat to its existence. It's the grazing of wetlands. People put their cattle into wetlands and that's where the birds breed. Um, people burn um, the grasslands in the winter and the wattle cranes breed in the winter. So you've got chicks and nests that can be destroyed through fire. Um, you've also got people who find cranes or classify cranes as pests. And we've had farmers who in the past have poisoned cranes. For the past seven years, Lindy has coordinated a group of expert field workers who make up the South African Crane Working Group team. As well as ringing and observing the birds, they use satellite tracking to monitor the cranes in the wild. One of the main tasks the field officers face is the challenge of persuading the local farmers to join the scheme. With 90% of our cranes occurring on private land, the farmers are obviously one of our major target areas. So we've instituted a system which we call the crane custodian system. And it's really a, a bit of a status symbol. Farmers now come to our field workers and say, how do I get one of those? Lindy and her field officers continue to make great inroads into the conservation of cranes and wetlands of South Africa. But as cranes have no regard for political boundaries, it was imperative for Lindy to expand her project out into the rest of Southern Africa. In the 11 key crane states, among them Angola, Zimbabwe and the Congo, Lindy has managed to overcome civil war, poverty and lack of resources to find champions of crane and wetland conservation. Tomorrow's program, we're going to get up really early. How yeah. many hours um, will there be? About an hour. An hour. Yeah. In November 2000, Lindy's program took hold in the East African countries with the help and backing of the American based International Crane Foundation. I think Lindy has had a very important role in, in kind of bringing people together regionally. 
of having different people uh, join together from different countries and exchange skills and ideas and visions and try and think more globally. Lindy's multinational organization is an incredible achievement. She has found funding to employ and supply all the African teams and brings them together annually. I think the scale of the map is too small. We can't see the details. Some of these countries are continually in crisis, but Lindy still manages to visit and support her field officers. Zimbabwe is her latest challenge. In Zimbabwe, you've got land invasions, um, the white farms, um, the cattle ranches, where, where most of the cranes were. So you can imagine the impact that the land invasions have. Our field officers are not able to work safely in that country anymore. So we do have a problem monitoring and maintaining the cranes. But in Zambia, Zimbabwe's less volatile neighbour, Lindy is having greater success. Zambia has become crucial to the African crane programme. Although the crane population has declined over the last 10 years, Zambia still has more wattled cranes than any other country. It was obviously an absolutely key country that we had to get involved with if we wanted to really look at, at conserving the species. After months of searching, Lindy met a local crane enthusiast called Ben Kamwaneshi. She realized he would be the perfect representative for the crane project in Zambia. She asked Ben to search the landscape for all the cranes and their nest sites to provide a census of all Zambia's wattle cranes. We're trying to look at the train and trying to find the um, reasons why if the, bird is, the population is going up or is going down, then uh, we'd like to get down now to the threats that is causing the decline of the populations of these birds. The data he collects for her is vital for Lindy's multinational program to protect the birds and their habitats. Ben's main focus for the Africa project is the Kafui Flats, a vast wetland area right in the center of Zambia. This ecosystem supports both cranes and people. Sadly, it is under threat. Two dams have been built to provide the country with hydroelectric power. These have severely disrupted the flow of water. This has an immediate impact on the nesting cranes. It's completely confusing the birds as to when they should or shouldn't breed. And the problem is, is that the birds breed on quite a nice big high mound, but suddenly unseasonal flooding um, from dam releases is going to flood those nests. So really, Ben is going to be looking at the impact of the dam releases, um, of the water releases from the dam on those nest sites. The dams don't just affect the birds. The locals who have lived here for years rely on this fertile ecosystem too. The Kafui Flats provide them with clean water, grazing land, and a good supply of fish. <coughs> to maintain the balance, it is imperative for the African project and the locals to work together. It's a matter of learning from each other and working together. We have to find a way to do it. Lindy has identified and supported people like Ben throughout Southern Africa. She has provided training, knowledge, skills and resources so that conservation can be left in the hands of the locals who live and work in these countries. These people have really overcome some incredible hardships. And without the individuals and the motivated people that we're working with, we wouldn't actually have a program. Without Lindy and her team, the cranes could slip into extinction, leaving behind diminishing wetlands and changing the face of Africa forever. <laughs>